so we'll be discussing some questions on arrays and this will be the final nail in the coffin i'll say about the arrays and uh, from my side and after that you'll have to practice a lot of questions on arrays because i think we have covered the theory of arrays and then we have done uh, i think five to ten questions i'll just take a couple of more questions so to set the tone for the session after that uh, we can discuss about searching sorting and things like that so let's go to the first question of arrays <coughs> for today's session this is the first question so the question is uh, tagged as uh, stock buy and sell so now what is the question the question says that you are given prices so there is an array uh, which has which uh, contains prices let's suppose pr pr price of a stock so this seven means that uh, seven rupees. Let's suppose this one means this is one rupees five, three, six, four, something like this. You'll be given a bunch of prices, and this means on the ith day. So let's suppose today is the date. Today's date is tenth March. So this is on tenth. This is on eleventh March, twelfth, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen days. So this is these are the dates. So on these particular dates, you are being given the stock prices. So now the question is, you want to maximize the profit. Okay, so you want to maximize the profit. Now you will have to uh, you will have to choose a day to buy a stock, and you will have to choose a day to sell a stock, and you should get the maximum profit. So profit you should get, you should sell at higher price, and you should buy at lower prices, and that's how you should get the maximum price. Let's suppose consider this as past data. Consider that you have the data, and you want to speculate. If I bought the stock at on this day, and if I sold the stock on this this day, let's suppose I will get the maximum profit. And now you will have you have to you have to tell me those two things. Okay. And you have to return the maximum profit. What's the what's the maximum profit? The return that you have to tell me is maximum profit. So how much maximum profit could be made? That is the question for you. Everybody okay with the question? Understood question? That's what here the, the explanation. Okay. Example is seven one five three six four. This is the input. Okay. Now uh, the output here is five because maximum profit I can make is five. That means I can buy. I think at uh, one rupees and probably sell it at six. This is the maximum profit I can get. So the total profit I'll get is five rupees. Six minus one is five because I uh, bought the stock at one rupees and I sold it for six rupees. The total profit I got is five. That is your question. So if you are you are given an array, so what you have to do? You have to tell me the maximum return that is achievable within that time span that you have been given. Now please attempt the question and tell me different approaches. Think for let's suppose two minutes or so. Yes, Rian. Tell me yes, your approach. Yes, Rian. Tell me your approach. Sir, सबसे पहले array में जो minimum number है उसका position find कर लेंगे. Okay. Step, step, okay. Step one will be. Step one will be. Find. Find. Uh, minimum, minimum number. Minimum number element. Okay. Number element. Okay. इसके बाद उसके जो right side में जो जो element है उसमें सबसे highest difference कौन से position पे है वो वाला position find कर लेंगे. Uh mm huh. -hmm. बस आई थिंक उतना ही फाइंड हाईएस्ट एलिमेंट फाइंड हाईएस्ट एलिमेंट ऑन राइट साइड राइट साइड राइट साइड सो बट द प्रॉब्लम इज हाउ विल यू फाइंड द प्रॉब्लम इज हाउ विल यू आई एम गेटिंग इको फ्रॉम योर साइड कैन यू प्लीज डू समथिंग विद द माइक्रोफोन सो या बट आई थिंक योर अप्रोच इज लाइक सॉर्ट ऑफ गुड बट इट इज सेइंग मी फाइंड मिनिमम नंबर मिनिमम नंबर एलिमेंट सो इफ आई हाउ शुड आई डू दिस सो दिस इज नॉट एग्जैक्टली क्लियर टू मी find when a number like tell me the procedure exact procedure i'll find a minimum element so how to find that should i go in the array sequentially so let's suppose i found minimum element here and how how will you consider that this is minimum element should you go in the whole iteration first yes sir so will you do the whole iteration and find the minimum number and after let's suppose you'll do the whole iteration let's suppose you found this as minimum number and then you will find the highest number uh, around this So don't you see there is problem in the approach? Like I can at least intuitively see the problem in the approach. What is the problem? Mm, let's suppose the minimum number was like this. So we had minimum number, which is somewhere like here one. So we have minimum over here, and on the right hand side we had ten. Okay, the return and right now I had uh, let's suppose hundred over here, which is not minimum, and then I had five hundred over here. So if you see, if I bought stock at here and sold it at here, I'll get four hundred profit. But by your algorithm, I'll find the minimum number. That is, I'll find find this number one. Okay. Then on the right hand side, I'll find the maximum number. That is this ten. So I'll get only nine return. So do you see the problem with the approach, though? Yes, sir. So this is just an example I created because you were saying they find minimum number of uh, minimum number. I found a minimum that's one, and then find the highest element on the right hand side. Highest number on right hand side was ten. So the return was nine nine according to you. But actual return, if you see. Maximum return would have been four hundred because I had this hundred and five hundred. I would have 
bought stock here, I would have sold it here. Can you come with a good attempt though? It's a good attempt. Yes, okay. Tell me your approach. Sir, if we sort the array in increasing order. We'll sort the array in the increasing order. Increasing order, right, sir. Okay. And we take the difference from the last element and the first element. That will be the maximum profit. We'll buy this stock at the minimum price. Uh -huh. Again, again, it's a problem. There is a problem. Because now order matters here. Okay, so what I'm saying is, let's suppose we have this. So if your approach is correct, so if you sort the array, so sorting will disturb the whole order. So do you see the problem here? So if I'm like this one, two, four, five, six, so you will sometimes say that I'll uh, sell here and I'll buy here. But this is not a possible, this is not possible in real time. So you have to, you have to respect the order. The order should be such that uh, you should sell, you should buy at, uh, at previous time and sell in the future. So, but if you sort it, now you are not uh, respecting the order. So, what will happen that time is, so your answer will ma will maximize the difference actually. So, it will not give maximum profit. So, because uh, let's suppose if this one was, this one was somewhere around here. So, in sorting, it will be here now. So, you will buy on this and you will, let's suppose there is no, no element after this one. Let's suppose there is no element after this one. And your algorithm tells you buy at one and sell at six. But when you bought at one, you cannot sell because this is the last day of trading. So you cannot sell it now. Right. Sir, one another approach came to my mind is that okay. if we take the first, sir, if we take the first element, mm -hmm. sir, and we will uh, subtract it from the second element, mm -hmm. and we'll hold the result. Then this we is... will compare the result with the first and the third element's difference. Mm -hmm. Ha! This is brute force. I think yeah, this will work. If I'm correct, so what are what are you saying is you are trying to do the brute force. I think this will work. Okay. Right, right. So what are you what you are saying is you will take the first element. Let's suppose you will consider I'll buy the stock here, and then I'll sell it also here, 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 and I'll compute. I'll compute if I buy the stock here and what will be sort of uh, maximum profit for first, and you'll do the same for second element. Right. And you'll you'll take the second element, uh, buy it here, and sell, 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 and you'll keep the track of everything, and you will see among them. Uh, what is the maximum profit I'll get? Is is that your approach? Yes, sir. That is brute force. I think this will work, and it will take I think order n square complexity. Yeah, yeah. yeah, this is this this will perfectly work. Because what we are doing is you are first by initializing. I think everybody understood the approach. What he said is, uh, you take the first element and let's uh, consider this, and we'll buy our stock at the at this point, okay? And then we'll sell it here, sell it here, sell it here, 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 and we'll compute all the possible prices. Okay, then with the, in the second iteration, now I'll choose this stock to purchase. I'll say I'll buy the stock at this point and sell here, sell here, sell here, and we'll keep track of this. And we'll keep on doing it continuously for the till the last element. And we'll see what is the maximum profit that we can get. This is a brute force, uh, brute force algorithm, and I think it will work. And complexity is order n square. Yes, and you can code it for yourself. Now there is an optimal approach also. Can somebody think of the optimal approach? I'll give you maybe two more minutes. Let me give you a hint. You can just look at this graph. If something goes like this, goes like this, then goes like this. Something like this. Okay, so where should you uh, buy and where should you sell? First look at look from the graph and then ask yourself a question, why should I do it? Okay, if I have a graph, let's suppose we make a graph 1, 2, 4, something like this, 5. So 5, let's suppose, means here. So this is 5 over here. This is 1, let's suppose, is over here. 2 is here. 4 is somewhere here. Now connect these lines. And then you, then you see, you'll get a graph from here. So why, why will you buy and why will you sell? So it is better, let's suppose, here in this situation, in this 5, 1, 2, 4 situation, you will buy it over here and you will sell it over here. So that means you will buy at the lowest point. And then you will see this highest point, let's say 4. Because you get this length, this length is much more. So here if you also compare the length, so here, this length is the highest highest length and probably you can also see it here so it is better to buy something over here and sell it at the top this is just a visual, visual representation now you have to bring it into the algorithm so how will you do it and you will just uh, buy something at the, at the lowest point and get it uh, at the highest point and buy, sell it at the highest point and this graph can be somewhere around this this like this also so that time you'll also do the same. What is the lowest point? This is this is you'll you'll say, you'll buy it over here and you will sell it over here. So how many are uh, at least is is this picture clear? Yes, sir. Now think on these lines. 
so the approach goes like this so you will maintain two variables i'll try to tell you the approach and uh, uh, then the first i'll tell you the intuition behind the approach so what is the intuition behind the approach and then we'll uh, go to the algorithm design of this so we'll basically we just wanted to travel once because we found an algorithm brute force which is order n square but here i wanted to decrease the complexity and i have an algorithm which runs in order n now i'll see i'll tell you how does it run in order n so how we'll linearly travel the array that's the first step and we can maintain two things we can maintain the minimum from the start of array and compare it with the every element if the if it is greater than the minimum that uh, uh, then the minimum then we take the difference and maintain the maximum also and otherwise we update the minimum so we'll see this how it works so now you have two variables let's suppose we'll call them uh, max okay we'll call them max uh, and we'll call them minimum something like this so maximum will be initialized with zero okay and minimum will be initialized with the maximum value let's suppose with with plus infinity then we'll run a loop from zero to n okay we'll run a loop from zero to n so we'll update the minimum price if it is greater than the current element so now we have this so this is our array so when do we update know the update rule so when when are we updating so what i'm doing is i'm updating uh the i'm running a loop first from zero to n let's suppose this is my zero to n and minus one or whatever it is so update the minimum price if it is greater than the current element so we are having current element over here and we are updating minimum only if it is greater than the current let's suppose we'll uh, just have this array which i just constructed that was uh, 7 1 5 3 6 4 something like this okay this was my array so now this 7 if i run the loop from uh, here to here from the start to end so the first step is uh, maximum is 0 and uh, my minimum is uh, let's suppose infinity so now in the first iteration i'll see i'll show this is this is the this is my minimum now why because i'm updating the minimum uh, when it is uh, when when my minimum is greater than uh, my current element so current element is 7 now it will get the value of 7 okay everybody following me so update the minimum element if it is greater than the current element of the array then we'll take the difference this is the major the major step then we'll take the difference of minimum price with the current element okay minimum price and current element and maintain it in some maximum let's suppose maximum price we can we can maintain it in here so now take this minimum okay this uh, this uh, 7 is uh, uh, over here is minimum now and take its difference with it okay take the difference of the minimum price with the current element of the array and compare and maintain it in this so you'll have to uh, you'll have to compare it with the ma uh, max so far and uh, then we'll uh, store it into max so this is where we'll do it so uh, the first step that we'll see is uh, now we'll go to the next this one so uh, is uh, is one less than minimum that that's what we'll compare the first uh, you'll compare it uh, in here so uh, minimum price so i'll write it in the code probably here and it will be like these two steps i'll write is the minimum price how i'll compare it minimum price is equal to minimum of min price so whatever the minimum price originally was there comma the array element which i am compared against so this is one step step one so that it becomes easy for me to keep a track so minimum price is this and the second compare that i am just saying is that maximum pro or max whatever i did maximum is max of so let's call it maxx so max of whatever was in the max element comma array of i minus minimum price this is what i am doing these two steps i am doing continuously okay i am for the first thing is i am comparing minimum price and the current array so whatever is there so this is the first step compare compare this element with the minimum and set the minimum whichever is minimum among these two if uh, right here if you see infinity comma 7 among those minimum was 7 so i set the minimum is equal to 7 this is my first step so step 1 is over here step 1 is so you set minimum is equal to minimum of whatever the current element of array is array of i comma this minimum whatever the minimum was previously and among those which are is minimum you set that minimum and what is the second step the second step is you now keep a track of max also so max you see whatever was there in the maximum and you also take this array of i minus minimum price <coughs> so whatever minimum price was there so you take minimum price this minimum price comma array of i so array of i minus the minimum price okay so this will be some value comma so whatever was the max previously so whatever was the max previously and this you will set onto this maxx this is our step 2 
okay so here what we we'll, what we are doing is so this is the major uh, this is the important step over here which i told you in the intuition that this array of i your uh, decrement it with the minimum price so whatever minimum price you have seen so far so if you see the graph also if you see that graph so which we made something like this so what you are you want to see whatever minimum you saw so far so you saw a minimum uh, minimum price over here and then you saw whatever array element array of i so let's suppose you saw it here and now you want to uh, uh, buy it here and sell it here so this is what will ensure that so this will tell you take this area of i element and uh, and subtract it the minimum price okay if it was uh, uh, if it was like uh, greater than this maximum price so we are taking max of both of these so we are taking maximum of both of these whatever maximum you had so far if it is more than if it if this value the value that uh, i am hovering over if this is value than the max you already had that means you will update your max so the only two things we are doing is you are updating your max and you are updating your min so what is min doing min is taking the value what is the minimum value and the current element so you are you are taking that as minimum value okay because i want to sell at this whatever what, I, what uh, I think uh, asrar said the local minimum i want to first uh, buy at that and whatever is the uh, is then optimum according to that minimum and we'll sell it at there so this is keeping the track so first you are taking a minimum so how do we maintain minimum so you are taking area of i and the minimum element then what you are doing is whatever is the minimum price so this is basically minimum price so i am taking this minimum price and subtracting it with the area of i okay so area of i is subtracted by the minimum price so i'll get the profit this is my profit this over here is my profit okay and then i am comparing with the maximum element so this is the max profit that i got so far okay because i am initializing with the max with zero and this will keep on updating and this will ensure that always i am keeping the track of all max values is it clear so maybe i'll i'll run the code one so that uh, you see it so because example was 715 uh, let me see the example again 715364 so this was my example now keep the track of this so we had uh, i'll write max maximum element that is max pro and i have minimum price so these are my two elements which i'll keep track of now you know the two steps and this was again infinity so i'll uh, denote it with infinity and this is with zero so go to, go to the first element now you see seven is there so uh, which element should i update so i the first step is compare the minimum price and the array of i compare the minimum price and the array of i there is seven so you will update it with seven okay then what you will do max max of so first you will see what is the maximum and you will compare array of i minus minimum price array of i so this is seven minus minimum price this is again seven so 0, 0, max is still zero so uh, you won't do anything over here so give uh, remember these steps so again i'll write minimum price how do you update it you write it you write minimum of uh, minimum price comma area of i this is the first step and second step is you also update this max pro so max pro is equal to maximum of whatever initially max pro had comma area of i uh, minus uh, this minimum price okay So these are two steps. Now I'll I'll go to this. My pointer will increment towards this. Again, I'll compare. I'll compare these two. I'll compare minimum price and I'll compare the element. So which is minimum? This one is minimum. So I'll update this as one. Okay. Now I'll go to the second step. I'll see do I have to increment this max pro. So I'll see what was the uh, uh, what was the minimum over here. So now I'll uh, compare these things. Area of i minus minimum price. So area of i minus minimum price. So this is uh, again one. One minus one is again zero. So I don't have to increment this again. So now I'll go in the third iteration. Third iteration now it's five. So minimum price I don't have to update it. So now I won't update the minimum price. Okay. Now I'll update the max pro. Why? Because this five, uh, this is five minus one is four. Four is greater than this zero. So four will get updated. So if you see array of i minus minimum price. So this is five minus one. That is four. And max pro was zero. So zero comma four. Maximum of these two is four. Now I'll go over here. Okay. Now it's three. So again minimum price. This is uh, uh, this is not uh, greater than minimum price. This is greater than minimum price, so I won't update this. So, but still, I'll take the. This is three minus one is two. So two, I'll compare with max pro. That is four. I'll still not update it. The, then I'll go at six. Okay, now I went at six. So here, if you see at six, this again is greater. So minimum price won't get updated. So six over here minus one. That is five. So area of i that is six minus minimum price is one. So that is uh, five. And max pro is four, so four comma five. Who is greater? Five is greater. So I'll write five over here, and then I'll go to four. So if I went to four, 
so after that you again see that this won't get updated this also will not get updated so at the end of iteration 5 is the maximum so the intuition was this again if you see this so 7 was somewhere around here let's suppose 7 is here 1 is here 5 is somewhere here let's suppose 5 is somewhere here 3 is somewhere here and 6 is here and 4 is let's suppose here so now if you join these points see it so this is how a graph will look like in the stock market okay so now why, why did we buy we buy bought it here okay why did we sell we sold it here we sold at 6 bought at 1 okay and how did i keep it keep a track of that I, I kept the track by using the two variables i was thinking what uh, whatever was the maximum uh, profit i got till uh, so far so this was my maximum profit and this was a minimum pro what is the minimum pro i was keeping track of that how many of how many uh, to how many of this uh, how many of you is this algorithm clear again uh, uh, this picture should be some sort of like, clear in your head Everybody clear with this or should I repeat it? No, sir, it's clear. Okay, just uh, now let me show you the code and we'll see it. I have probably written the code for the same. So this over here, if you see it, this is my maximum profit. I have written max pro that is zero and then minimum price is a float of infinity. So here it is. So then I'm going from, I uh, ranging from one to length of the array. So minimum price is minimum of uh, minimum price in area of i i am comparing what is the minimum price so far and the current element which, whichever is minimum among them then i am also saying what's the maximum profit so maximum profit i am telling is subtract whatever is the current element from that subtract minimum price to compute the profit this is my profit this over here is my profit okay then uh, this is uh, this is max pro so max pro is the whatever I, profit i had so far should i replace the profit or should i sell it right now so this is and uh, at the at the end i am returning this so now, if I run this code, you can clearly see, I think I do the same example. So the profit is five. Now let's suppose I want to sell it over here 12. Now, now I know that profit will be 12 minus one. That's 11 should be the profit. So you can see that the 11 is the profit. I hope it is clear. Now let's move to the next question. So next question is majority element. So majority element says that given now you have an array, let's suppose you have this array nums is given to you with size n. So in that, there is an element, if that element appears more than n by two times, more than floor of n by two times, okay, you assume that element to be majority element, okay, and we have also done, seen this in KN and K nearest neighbor algorithm, we see a uh, majority element which appears like, um, uh, if it's a binary classification, it should appear greater than n by two number of times. So that's the problem here. So if you have an element, so if you are given an array and in that array, you want to compute a majority element. So uh, how to compute the majority, that's the algorithm you'll have to give me. So what is the majority element? The element which appears greater than floor of n by two times. Okay, let's suppose we have this two, two, one, 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 two, two, and two. This is my array. So if you see, what is the length of array? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight by two floor is four. So now an element should at least appear five times. Uh, so as I can call it a majority element. So two, two, 2, 2 and 2, it is 5 times over here. So 2 is a majority element. Okay, now if I take an example again, 3, 2, 3, this may be an array. So now the size of this array is 3, 3 by 2 floor, this is equal to 1. So if a, if element is uh, present one of 2 or more times, or greater than or equal to 1 times, so this 3 is over here, it's present 2 times here. So this 3 is the majority element. Is the, is the, is the problem clear? Yes, sir. Now you have to tell me what, uh, how to compute this majority element. Take uh, maybe two minutes and then answer me. Yes. So Ryan, tell me the approach. What should we do? Sir, array ko sort kar lenge. Uske baad jo middle element hai, uska value find karenge. Phir dekhenge uske right side bhi middle element akar kar raha hai. Matlab continuously end tak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sort the array right. Sure. And after that, we'll find the middle element. So that you are ensuring this n by two, at least my n by two elements won't be. Huh. I think this this approach should work. Yes, yes, I think this should work. I don't see a problem with this approach. So the approach he said you have to sort the array. If you sort the array and then take the middle element. Now you are taking the middle element uh, and then uh, seeing uh, what occurs on the right hand side. 
okay so if, if the right hand side uh, is followed by the same element a whole the right hand side you have to check the whole the right hand side is followed by the same elements so then we can ensure or you can keep a count also so you anyway are uh, so n by 2 yeah n by 2 floor you have to take it at least it should be for the for odd number so for odd the number should be n by 2 floor for even number it will be exactly divided yes i think the approach is okay -ish. this is okay approach so what is the time complexity for sorting uh, uh, we will have order and log n okay, for sorting and then we will take the middle element and then you will have to scan through n by 2 order and log n plus order n by 2 so this, this is again order and log n so can you think of a better approach i think this you can code also this is this is also approach and it is perfect there is no problem with the approach Try to do it in order n. That's the optimal approach. So the approach that uh, Amir said is keep a separate array and keep a count of this. Okay, and for each element, uh, keep a let's suppose we'll have variable for each. So for first, uh, we'll keep a variable. Let's suppose we have an array like this: one, two, five, one, one, something like this. So for one. You will uh, increment the counter over here and then you will increment the counter again. So for each of the elements, you will increment the counter and then you will uh, traverse this array. So you will traverse this array and you will see if the element, if there is some element which occurred greater than n by 2 times, floor n by 2 times and you will output that element. I, 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 I see another problem with this approach. So how will you keep the track of each element though? So how will you say that this uh, zero indices is representative of one element or this one is representative of uh, let's suppose this element two? How will you keep the track of this? You understood my question. My question is, how will you say which element uh, is it? Or you'll have to separately uh, name the variables. Yes, sir. So okay. if you if you are telling me, let's suppose I have elements like this two five six two five. There 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 can be an approach like this two five six two five six. Uh, 128 or something so you will create an array and of maximum length so you will say what are the maximum element is in the array create array of that length let's suppose i'll create an array of 256 length so what are element i find i'll increment that indices so let's suppose here we'll have 256 index you'll increment it plus one okay then plus two then you'll increment it by two so 128 you will go at 128 in index and you will increment it by one but that way you will need more array than order n so you'll probably need order of maximum element it can be let's suppose infinity so if i give you an element which is 1 million so you have to make a 1 million array long so how many of you understood this there is a problem with this with the space complexity even so i can increase the space to infinity sir hashing ka use agar hum karenge jo amir ne approach bola hai like 256 maps to element k right ha 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 hashing can be used yes 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 so you'll use the hashing so whatever you are doing is you'll keep this hash pair so you'll maintain a hash table because now still we don't know hash table but we can discuss this hash table works something like this so you have an key and a key pair basically so you have some key and value so you'll use this element as key 256 as key then increment uh, the number of times it appears and you'll store that as value 2 and something like this and then you will uh, iterate through whole of this hash table to see and that is an approach I think yes yeah this is order and approach also so now because now you don't know hashing that's the question the question is i have not taught you hashing but this is a good approach by using hashing i don't see a problem with this approach also we will we'll separately take hashing in, in more detail but i think this is a uh, correct approach and uh, do i see any problem let me think no 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 i don't see any problem so this approach works perfectly can you think of some other algorithm? Maybe you won't be able to. That's the reason I'm telling you this approach. So whatever algorithm I'm taking, I'm trying to build the intuition. So in the previous problem, I build the intuition. Sometimes you have to draw graphs and stuff and see if you can uh, find a pattern in that. So in here, uh, I'll show you like how to think about these things. So, like think out of the box and uh, find these problems. So now if you have an array, something like this. So what you do is. Now you again use the count. So let's suppose we have element 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, something like this. Now you know that 2 is the majority element over here. Let's suppose. So what you'll do is you'll keep a count. So whenever an element appears, so this is the intuition I'm telling you first. So intuition, after that we'll see the example. So what I'm telling is that if a majority element is counted, 
So if a majority, if you keep, if you keep a count of majority element, let's suppose you keep a count, some count, let's suppose, and whenever you see an element, you increment this uh, uh, counter, you set this counter as one. It, initially it was zero, then whenever you see the element, you will uh, have an element, okay, and then whatever you do is, uh, you will have this element as one, and you will increment the counter as one, okay, and now you'll set the element also as one. Now again, when you just went in the second iteration you again saw this one you will increment so now compare this one with the element that you have so now the element is same if the element is same you increment this counter as two so now we have two over here okay again you will see this you will compare this and this element now again this element is same this is equal to three okay now what happened when you come on the two now the element is different okay element if it is different now you will decrement this counter you will decrement this counter by one but you will still keep the element as one the, the intuition being that if uh, if an element is majority element, everything will get cancelled, but still there will be some count left for it. So if it the element existed greater than and by two times, okay. So maybe its count will be cancelled by all the elements, but still at at least it will appear one times there. So still count will, will will not become zero. So once the count becomes zero, then only will you update this element. Then only will you update the element. So if the count is still there, you won't update the element. Is the intuition clear? Yes, sir. So the whole point being that you are, uh, if there is an element which is, which exists major at the times, that means if you just keep a counter, if you see the elements continuously, or if you see the element twice, so you just increment the uh, counter of this and keep the element. And once uh, you, the once the element is different, you decrement the counter. Okay. Now we'll see the algorithm and we'll see it uh, uh, formally, and then you will uh, at least get convinced about the approach. So the code goes like this. So what you, what you will do is you will first have an count that is count that suppose is zero. And then you'll also have this element which will which will be as none. Okay, now we'll write on the code. So the important thing is, so if count is equal to is equal to zero for for any element, if you see count is zero, then make the count one and make the array. So this is the code snippet. The first code snippet is this. So if count is equal to is equal to zero, if this is count is zero, make the count one, make it equal to one count one and make the element is equal to that element which is under consideration the element area of i this is the first code snippet okay now we'll see so one let's take an example of uh, some other example that i'll also show you in the code so the example that goes in the code is like this this is two two one 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 two two this is the example that we discussed also so now we have this two over here so I'm running the loop from uh, zero to n. So here, if you see this count is equal to zero. So I'll make it one. I'll make the count one. And now I'll make this element as two. Okay. This is this is the, because of this snippet. So another thing that I'll check is if the element is equal to equal array. I'll also compare this element and array. I'll see if the elements are same. So the second part of the code will be something I'll write here. So I'll write it here. So if the element is equal to is equal to area of i, that means if this element that you saw previously, if it is same as the next element that you are going to see, if it is same, so then you have to increment the counter. Okay, you increment the counter. You have to just do this. You have to increment the counter by one. So now you saw this two. Okay, so what will you do? You will increment the counter. You saw this two, you will increment the counter by one. That is equal to two. And still the current element is same. But but what happens if you see some other element? If you see if this element is not equal. Now in the th in the third scenario, we'll also have one more thing here. So if this array, if this element is not equal to array, so if they're different, if element is not equal to, let's suppose this array of i. So that time, what you'll do? You'll again initialize the counter with zero. Okay, you'll make this counter as. Okay, you you'll uh, you'll make this count. Uh, the first thing is you'll make the counter minus one not zero count minus one because you are decrementing it with this and when you are decrementing it with this and you will keep on running the loop till the counter becomes zero once the counter becomes zero and you will update the element okay once the counter becomes zero because it will run again so once the counter will become zero it will go to this if counter is zero then it will run this loop again so here if you see this so it, it saw one so what will happen is one it will decrement this counter because the element is different element two and one is different so it will decrement it will become one but it will not update it because it is still running now it will go to this again one is there so this element this two differs from this one so what will happen it will decrement this with zero okay now you saw it, it it decremented with zero so again if you see this this two is not equal but if you see this count is equal equal to zero now 
the count became zero. Now you will update this element with one, okay, and you will also update this count with one. Okay, now what will, what will happen with you update with one? Now you uh, the, now the two appeared. When the two appear, you will see this count. Is, uh, you will see this element is not equal. So this will go into this and it will decrement the counter. It will again make it zero. After this, you saw this two. So when you saw this two, you will come again over here. So you saw that count is equal is equal to zero. So you will make this as two. You make this as one. So the whole point of this algorithm is so assumption here is that if an element occurs greater than n by two times. Okay, so irrespective if other element decrease its count, but still there at the end there will be one count left for it. As in this case, so we had like one, two, three, four times two appeared, and three times one appeared. Still, when you counted these uh, number of twos, so here still at the end one was left. Okay, if it is given that this element, uh, that this uh, array has the majority element, then you will directly return this two now. Is this clear? Is the algorithm clear? Yes, sir. Okay, and if it is not given that there is a problem though, if it is not given that there is a majority element, if it is not given for you, let's suppose it is not told to you that there is a majority algorithm, then you have to again make a pass. Okay, you and uh, now you got this element two, so you said that okay two is majority, but you are not sure if the array contains majority or not. So then you will have to keep track of where the two exists. So if now two comes and by two times, then you will say otherwise it, it is not. Why is the case? Because let's suppose everything was cancelled and at the end now this three came. Okay, let's suppose. Let's suppose some scenario is like this. So you found everything, and everything was cancelled, and at the end there is only one three. Okay. Now your algorithm will tell you that this three is the majority element, but this three appeared only once. Let's suppose still here one one two two was there. So everything was cancelled. So this uh, one got cancelled by two. This one got cancelled by two. Now this three had nobody to cancel. So at the end of your algorithm, that element will contain three, and the count will contain one. So you'll think this is majority element, but this is not majority element. So that is the reason I am telling you. If you are told that majority element is there, then it is guaranteed whatever you are getting after one iteration will be the majority. But if you are told that we don't know if majority element is there or not, then you have to under iterate through uh, the array one more one more time so as to confirm if this if this three is actually the majority element. Okay. Now let's see the code of it. So this is the code. If you see it over here, this is the code. So if you see the first, these things suggest uh, just the initializations n is the length of array count is zero and element is none. So what I'm saying is, if the count is equal is equal zero, so make the count one and make the element as element of array. Okay, this is the first scenario that I told you. Second scenario, if element is equal equal to array of i, if the element that is in consideration is equal and increment its counter that it appeared. So if it is not if it is not the case, then decrement the counter. So if the element is uh, is not equal, and this is what the first loop does. In the second loop just checks if there is no majority. If if it, we are not told that there uh, there is always a majority element, this only checks that. So if i is range and i is just increments the count and sees if the count one element appears greater than n by two times, then return element. Otherwise, return minus one. Was this problem clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So these were the uh, discussion on arrays. So I think we should stop our discussion on arrays over here.